Hi, Crabby here. So anyway, continuing on the theme of Rust. Um, so how do you support command line parameters? Well, let's take a look. So as usual, any links that I refer to, I'll put in the comments also. But anyway, those that are just joining in and haven't been seeing my previous videos. So what you need to f do first is to need to pick up the um, Rust programming tool chain and that you do through the Rust homepage and then you just click on get started and then you have options you can actually run it without installing anything but um, uh, the other option is you can download the uh, Rust setup program and run it and it, uh, it installs the whole Rust environment for you. So anyway, there's lots of different editors you can use, but in in, in my in this demonstration, I'm using um, Visual Studio Code. So you can pick it up from this website. So anyway, for this demonstration, as you see, I have no um, installed um, extension, so you can just use the vanilla code. And then um, when you want to create the package that I have. And I'll actually put this package on my GitHub page, so you can get it from there too. But you just create a directory and then um, you issue this command. And this will create a um, initial package with a hello world um, source code in it. So anyway, to support the development I created some command files. You can also use uh, make of course, if you feel more comfortable with that, but I thought just for this tutorial to make it easier to see exactly what, what commands I use, then I just use standard command files. So the, the basic first one is a clean command. So then you jump into the directory where you have the package, and then you issue cargo clean, and then that will clean that package. And then I just come out of the um, out of that package directory. And then we have a build command. So this, so you again, you current directory into the package directory, and then you say cargo build, and then you come out of it. So pretty simple stuff. And then when you want to run it, I uh, have a command run, and this runs um, this example that I've created with a known good set of parameters. So you you go into the package and then you issue cargo run, and then this <laughs> slash slash means that everything after that is the um, like parameter you know, content that you want to pass to your actual program that you're, you're going to execute. So these are parameters. So um, what I did it for this example is I built a simple application that um, basically it, it subtracts numbers or adds numbers, and then you can give a list of numbers after the initial command. So pretty typical usage of what you might have in a real command line. And um, then I also threw in a test. So um, now this contains two categories of test. Um, so this is like uh, cargo run commands that are running variants um, of um, commands. Um, that um, you know because you, in testing you want to like run a set of cases that should work and then you want to run a test of cases that are known to fail like there are known failure cases so here I have a list of the um, or different permutations of the uh, of the like here you see subtract and from different number of numbers and then the same with that and then I've created a set that will actually fail uh, technically speaking, cargo run, just running it, it's, it's not really a failure mode, but it's, uh, yeah, because it, do, it will just tell you what, what the format of the command sh should be, but, <coughs> but I, I categorized it as failed. You could also have included it in this um, run section. And then um, different variants of corrupted, um, so it says subtract, and obviously A is not a number, and then you subtract with only one number, so there is no other number. And then you uh, issuing also an illegal command, a non-support command. And then at the end it will run all the internal tests uh, that are defined, and I'll show you those when we get to the code. So then you say cargo test, and it will run all internal tests. So that's basically the 
the infrastructure part of it. So now we can have a little look at the source code. So um, this source code presentation is uh, useful and intended for those that are just getting into Rust and coming from various other other development platforms like uh, Python, C Sharp, C++, C development, the more classical um, programming environments that have been existent forever because there are some uh, some <coughs> things with the Rust um, that um, if you don't don't if you come from another environment and then you just try and do programming randomly you 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 will get um, <laughs> very annoyed very quickly <laughs> so anyway so what I've done is I just made a simple like I said it's a simple application but it, it's also when we go through it then you'll understand and I'll be able to make some um, yeah, highlights of, of, of different um, issues which are yeah rust specific or formats that are rust specific so anyway let's get started so in Rust they talk a lot about traits and um, what is traits? The definition of traits is it's a collection of method ty methods types can implement. So um, like in other languages you bring in um, the class you're going to use or the you know, sub functionality you're going to use. But in, in this case what you're bringing in is you're bringing the traits. So it's a definition of a group of functions that the, the subsystem will implement. So now we're going to use standard um, string and then the trait from str. This is not the object itself. This is the the trait that defines what functions that um, that um, uh, module will imp uh, implement and provide. Um, then we come to the actual main function definition, and fn is the designator in Rust that is used to define a function. Um, and um, what makes this a little bit different from other programming languages is the main in itself doesn't contain anything about argument handling. Uh, so as you see there's uh, no parameter here. And the, the main function as defined here, um, it doesn't return anything. So that needs to also be handled separately. So moving on. Um, here also we're having a difference from other things is that um, lots of functionality in Rust is implemented as a background macro definition. So for example print line is a macro definition and all the macro definitions are designated uh, with this special character. Otherwise the syntax is understandable. So moving on. And then if you're going to define a variable, then you use this keyword let. And um, you can optionally designate a type, which is this double, double dot definition. And um, you don't need to define a type if the compiler can infer it. And um, also in, the, in this specific case, um, when we're looking at this definition. So here's here we define a variable called args and we say that it's going to be a vector of string and then we say standard library environment arguments. And the interesting thing is that this here is not the arguments. So this is an iterator. So when you want to, to you have to tell the iterator to actually collect up all the arguments and give it to you as a vector of string. <laughs> so, so you might get stuck already with that. It's like, oh, why doesn't this work? I, I define the standard environment args. So I can't get anything from it. Yeah, you can't because it's an iterator. <laughs> um, and this you get into one of the an <coughs> annoying or yeah uh, features of Rust is that Rust has been uh, gone through quite a lot of chaotic development uh, in the early stages. And it's still sometimes suffering from um, changes uh, in the actual core language and, and how things work. So, for example, in, in here I have I have noticed based on experience that um, uh, when you um, you take a, a copy paste an example code and then suddenly it, it doesn't compile and then it basically is complaining about types being missing, is that there's a hundred percent certainty that on in some version of Rust toolchain it has compiled. It's just that they've changed the rules around um, how the system um, 
infers the type, and now that rule doesn't apply, does not work for that specific instance anymore. So you can you can have annoying situations where you download Rust source code and, and, and you can't compile it because it um, type inference rules have been messed with. Um, and then here we just say uh, let use this mess. And this is a good example where the type can be inferred. So it, since you're assigning a string to it, then it, it knows that it's a that it's a specific type, known type. Um, this will be uh, another thing that can clash with developers coming from other environments. That if clauses don't use brackets. And, and this is the thing when you're dealing with humanity and programming languages. It's like different um, natural languages. You know, why 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 does French do this and why does Italian do that and why does English do? <laughs> do <laughs> there's, there's no sometimes there's no logic. So why did they do, why did they decide not to use them since they're used in like everywhere? <laughs> But anyway, whatever. In in Rust, you don't use um, brackets, but you still need to use the curly braces to designate the actual logic. Um, and then we have the issue that this is this is checking the number of arguments, and it needs to be a certain number, minimum. And then um, if you want to sta send information to the standard error, uh, then you use something called unwrap to um, uh, to designate to uh, uh, identify if there's been an output failure in the standard error, and um, this is actually due to the fact that um, Rust doesn't have a concept of exceptions, so it has this idea that a functionality like an I/O function or something it, w it will return a, 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 like a output state as a return value and then you need to like unwrap that return value to, to actually get the result. Uh, one of the things that I noticed I put in here as I said that when or the rust has been changing over time so here I actually added a piece of code that used to work once upon a time and, and was in several examples but this no longer works it's been replaced with this. So there's a specific ePrint uh, LN micro to handle out to the um, standard error. And then as I mentioned, the return function, uh, it, it doesn't, like, as its form, you know, you don't see that it's actually going to return anything. And there's no type assigned to this main either. But here you have a, a standard process exit function that will actually return a, um, a certain value to the um, parent process. So moving on, so here we um, actually pick up what function is um, defined in the command line parameters, and here you have now the list of the arguments, and then um, this here, the add file designates the um, the and designates the that this is the address of reference, and then you um, use this brackets to and get the individual value and then again this is the type will be inferred so this is pythonic in its in itself so so in, in some instances it can in some instances it can't infer what the type is um now rust has a uh, has a feature and i'm going to div div go into this a little bit more at the end of the video because I don't know if this is of interest but there are instances where you can compile Rust code and then suddenly your virus scanner will say oh it's a virus found but anyway let's discuss that at the end of the video um, so here we picked up the function and now as correct programming procedures would be you shouldn't just accept whatever so here we create an internal list of um, valid functions. So functions is a vector of string, and then here you see how we um, we create it. And um, so we say it's a vector, and it's a macro, and then we say add is a string and subtract is a string. 
and then we just see and here we can use the same as like in uh, yeah, similar to Python where we just say okay um, not functions contains the actual function that we've been taken from the command line and if it, if it doesn't fit the two that we accept then we uh, we also use this eprint element and then we just exit uh, and then moving on so here we have the numbers we're gonna go get the numbers and that we want to be immutable so there's a, a mutt <laughs> keyword which designates that a parameter is mutable so meaning that it can be changed and then here we use the similar, like in Python, that we say four arguments in at the address of args, and then we start from index two and four. So that's quite easily understood. And here is, ah, oh, yeah, I could have mentioned it earlier, but there are actually no exceptions in Rust. Uh, type FT64, it's of type, um, so it has its own type name, so they're not really familiar or the similar to what they use in other programming languages but they're actually I think they're nicer from the perspective of, lo of a lower level um, interpretation of what the type is uh, in lots of language one has lots of keywords that are packed on top of keywords and defined partially through macros and if you're a low level developer you you can you really get annoyed with this you have to go down five levels to actually find out what is the base definition for this so in 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 Rust, you get closer to the metal in terms of uh, variable definition than you do in other languages. And it's more distinct also. You have 64 is a 64 bit floating point designation according to the floating point stamp. Um, uh, yeah, and the types also, they implement traits like from str. Um, expect is a method of a result object returned by from str and here you see this like weird concept that it's if if you take the return the raw return value it's going to be okay parenthesis value or error parenthesis and value and and in the case of when you use the expect then the value will be returned if everything is okay so what I did is that I, yeah, you can do. Basically, it's 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 adding the numbers it finds, converting them and pushing them into this numbers list. So nothing really amazing there. And then it's using, as I said, f64 from str, yeah, from the argument list. And then it's <coughs> the expect. And um, then if 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 the the well, how the expect will react is if the return is this then it will um, exit and uh, display this message here. But I also I put it out here just as, uh, to actually print the whole the raw return value so then you, you can actually see that it's actually this. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not something you believe. Very odd concept compared to other programming language. And um, then we say, okay, if the functionality is add, then we add the numbers with the numbers list, so nothing really uh, that. And then, of course, this is illegal, you shouldn't do this, but if it's not add, then it's obviously going to be subtract. <laughs> not the best programming <laughs> practice. And then the program ends. And um, if we scroll down, and then we'll just have a look at the um, subtract numbers. Um, here you see that we set the return type, so that's the way uh, the way you define the return type of a function. And then here you say numbers, and then you also say that okay, what is the type of the parameter? And um, then it just takes okay, result is the first one, and then it iterates through the rest, and then it's subtracting them, and then it returns. Uh, And then this this is the the thing that blows your mind a little bit in Rust is that uh, we return without return statement. So the return statement is supported in Rust, but it's not used. Basically, you you don't use it. And um, what you do is that you can just put a value 
just throw it into the code on its own line without the um, semicolon and then it's that's the return value so it exits from here <laughs> so that's a shocker when you first start program um, and then we have an related test so this is a so-called internal test so you designate it here with a bit of um, coloring so you give that fly uh, compile parameter uh, designating this as a test so this is subtract number test and then um, basically this is going to execute the subtract number with a specific set of parameters and using this assert macro to validate that the values are the same so so when it subtracts these two numbers, then you should get zero. There are lots of these. Uh, very, of course, like testing usual, there's lots of different asserts for very many different types of circumstances. So I won't go into the details, but um, this is like the raw skeleton. And then you have the add functionality. And then you see here we have um, the, uh, add, uh, the, the test for the add function. So anyway, so that's how the uh, how you process command line arguments, and then of course you can add and remove and whatever and get your own implementation. So let's have a look at um, doing stuff with this. So let's um, uh, No, we do. We do it all. We get take the clean one first. So, as you see, it um, cleaned away 95 files. So this actually Rust creates a huge amount of files when it's compiling stuff, even for this kind of small application, because every it seems to want to itemize everything that it uses into individual files in the uh, in its own internal. Um, uh, folder structure for the um, for the op the um, package that it's creating <laughs> uh, and then um, now it does recognize to if you change the code and you go directly to run or test it does recognize that all oh, the code has changed and then it will recompile but um, let's um, build just to show that it actually works mm -hmm. So here we see uh, builds okay, and then let's take a standard run. And as I said, this was the one that all oh, is correct syntax and will work. Mm -hmm. And then I've left in the uh, some of the debugging printouts. So here you see that um, yeah, it, it, that was the printout for it starting, and then. Here's the command subtract, and here's the actual numeric parameters that it's reason. As you see, that it's in the format okay, parenthesis of the value. And um, then here it says that it's the actual subtract, and then it uh, comes out with the, the number, and then it exits out. So nothing amazing there. Just to clear the display. Because this test one, it's going to create a lot of. I should have actually formatted the output a little bit more, same because you're going to get a lot of this. So, but anyway, let's do the highlights. So here, here's all the ones that should just uh, execute. It's the both the um, the command and the parameter, the numeric parameters, okay. And then you see it starts failing here uh, when it's in the list of. Uh, the, these will fail. Um, and yeah, this is the, as you see that this is the command that doesn't have any parameters at all. So then it just um, prints out how you should use this command. Here's like the one without um, with a number which is invalid. So then you see how it panics and then it exits. Float parsing error. I 
I should have actually added a bit more of the same logic there because I Was it? Yeah. I actually have a failing test uh, test use case because this one here does not exit cleanly. So what I wanted is that it would print out how do you like it would print out this usage command, and that it's not doing in that case. So, hey, we found a bug. Yeah, I'll fix the light. And then I, then at the end it runs the two t internal tests. So then they, it's the subtract add and subtract test. No, so now, now you see the whole process. So anyway, now um, main presentation is completed, but I'd like to actually return to this matter of um, false positive or positives. In um, in my in my case, I used the AVG virus scanner and Microsoft Defender, and Defender is not reacting, but a AVG is complaining, and. Um, I'm going to try and demonstrate how this actually fails and what happens. Now this I've added, a, why this worked for me is that I've added an exception in AVG. So for this directory, this specific directory location where this application is now, it will not fail. So I'll just set up a, uh, another directory, just copy this to another directory and, and then we'll, um, I'll try and demonstrate how it fails. So what I did is I took the exact same uh, pro project folder and I just copied it. So now it's command line copy. And, um, and we will do a clean. So that works. And then we will do a build. And that works. And then we'll do the simple run. wasn't much of a demonstration. So, how do I explain this? This worked when I did this demonstration. Ah, uh, of course, ABG has updated itself. Good, but not good. <laughs> so, okay. It could be my fault because when I actually added the exception, then it said, "Do you want to send this in? Uh, do you want to report this?" So I actually did say yes, and that was yesterday. No, that was two days now. But anyway, bummer. I can't demonstrate this then, so it means they've um. Okay, my only explanation is they've updated AVG. Let's see. Yep, that's what's happened. Because the virus definition was updated. Uh, th that's the date of I'm recording this, so it's the 6th of October. <laughs> of, of October, so, okay. But anyway, I suppose one has to be happy that this is, this is gone. Because um, I, I, I was doing this section in the video because I'm actually and I st I'm gonna keep this section in the video I'm not gonna take it away because I think this is informative for anybody uh, using Rust because I actually um, uh, this same uh, virus scan feature uh, it it um, blocked use or usage of the uh, Visual Studio Code ext extension Rust Analyzer, so it, it also is eight files from that. So um, I would assume now they've accepted that's a false positive. But the, this is, as I said, the 
uh, over the time that I've been using Rust on and off you know, for various things, then um, this uh, false positives in antivirus has has actually been a um, an issue. So that uh, so that's why I'm keeping I'm keeping this section in the video because uh, it's it's not impossible to think that you would uh, end up with this this problem in other scenarios. So this. Uh, Okay, I, admittedly this happens also in other programming languages that you can compile code and certain um, source code into binaries and then the binaries get um, flagged by one or other virus scanning software. And it's usually the um, it's usually the generic part of the virus scan analysis, so it's not actually finding anything very specific. It's finding a pattern that some... The, so what they do is they take a lot of vir known viruses and then they 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 rip rip them to um, you know to to certain types of binary code pattern patterns or certain behaviors of software and then they try and analyze when they get a new binary then they analyze does that binary contain similar behavioral patterns or certain binary um, signatures and then if it does then they flag it as a as a potentially to be a certain virus because of course viruses they hide themselves in binaries using they take themselves to bits and stuff so yeah but anyway um, I don't know good or bad demo but um, at least we could dis uh, we could discuss the issue and um, it seems like they've um, up the <laughs> AVGs I, I doubt that it's based on my feedback that the, var the virus um, definition of files has been updated I think they probably they might, as I said, that I have seen this before, and I would assume that many have been um, submitting feedback to AVG. And then, of course, AVG is not uh, they can't take this uh, take the word of one individual. They they need to then take in a mass of these, and then they make a separate lab initiative to identify if um, if they can actually flag it as a as a whitelist whitelist case. Oh, well, that was good that I could actually demonstrate and test that. So now I know also that that's been um, updated. So that, that's good. <laughs> that was annoying. Um, anyway, so this is the um, overview of a Rust um, command line utility that can accept command line parameters and then a general overview on the kind of main little main catch you issues if you come from other like yeah if you come from python c sharp and, you know, other environments and then you land on rust and um, i hope i've been able to highlight some of the some of the points that you you know syntactically and otherwise that you need to be aware of when you start because otherwise it's uh, rust is gonna uh, it's gonna trip you up and and and, and rust is very vocal in its um <laughs> in both its error messaging and uh, warning messaging, that, um, <laughs> you'll see you'll see crap loads of, of of red in your list, you know, build listings if you the first time you look at it. So I think it's actually a little bit more vulgar and more um, what do you call it? It's more verbose than other programming. It, for the the good part is if you have the energy to actually read what the compiler um, and the runtime system is telling you that it's actually very informative and can help you a lot but if you're if you're one of a more of a terse person that only wants to get down to the details right now 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 then um, I think you're gonna probably end up being pretty annoyed you know, with this you know. anyway I think we should wrap this one up yeah. see you in the next one and happy rust hacking hacking <laughs>